next on the news. See Apache. May there be peace for war torn Ukraine. Pope Francis making a plea for peace in Ukraine as Russia steps up attacks in the country. Plus, we are horrified by the aggression and destruction in Ukraine. Ukraine also on the mind of Bishop Robert Brennan during his first Easter homily as the new shepherd of the Diocese of Brooklyn. And the Easter celebration isn't over yet. We'll look at Easter Tide and what makes it so special. Plus, pastors filling up gas tanks instead of Easter baskets, all to help drivers out. I'm Christine Persichetti. Curse News starts right now. Russia not letting up on its attacks in Ukraine, one of the latest strikes hitting a hotel sheltering those fleeing the war. They fled the fighting in other parts of the country to come to Lviv where they thought they'd be safe. The assault happened on Monday right after the Easter weekend where the Pope once again denounced the war and urged people to pray for peace. Christos fos Christ. Pope Francis ending his homily at the Easter vigil saying Christ is risen in Ukrainian, acknowledging a delegation that came from the war-torn country. The following day, tens of thousands packed St. Peter's Square for the Easter Mass, where during his traditional Easter blessing, the Holy Father condemned the war. May there be peace for war torn Ukraine. So sorely tried by the violence and the destruction of the cruel and senseless war into which it was dragged. Those pleas seemingly falling on deaf ears as a Russian missile hit this tire repair shop in Lviv. A total of five missile strikes were carried out in the western city, which had been seen as a relatively safe place for those trying to escape the war. But another blast shattered windows at a hotel housing evacuees. At least seven people were killed and 11 injured, including one child. Patris, et fili, et spiritu santi. Before delivering the long-awaited Urbi et Orbi blessing, Pope Francis asked the world to pray for peace. Si scelga la pace, si smetta di mostrare i muscoli mentre la gente soffre. Per favore, per favore, non abituamoci alla guerra. Impegniamoci tutti a chiedere a gran voce la pace, dai balconi e per le strade. Pope Francis said the Ukrainian suffering calls to mind all those who suffer throughout the world. And he asked people to pray for Africa, the Middle East, and Latin America. Coming up on Currents News, we take a look at Easter celebrations in Ukraine, the joy of Christ's resurrection shrouded by a Russian invasion, the streets emptying as the fighting ramps up amid relentless air raid sirens. That's coming up on Currents News. In the Diocese of Brooklyn, Bishop Robert Brennan remembered the people of Ukraine. Easter Mass was held at the Cathedral Basilica of St. James in downtown Brooklyn. It was his first as the head of the diocese. During his homily, Bishop Brennan called on Catholics to get rid of the things that cause bitterness in us, especially in light of the war and the recent subway shooting. We are horrified by the aggression and destruction in Ukraine, along with the targeting of civilians, even of children. We are united in prayer for them, and I thank you for your generosity in response to helping those who are giving relief. We still feel the effects of the pandemic that afflicted us these past two years. And we cry out against the violence afflicting our city, not only the recent subway shootings, but all the violence in our streets. Bishop Brennan went on to say on Easter Sunday, we defy violence and oppression and Jesus comes to give us new direction and bring hope to our lives. To watch Bishop Brennan's full homily, just go to our website, currentsny.tv. 
You could still contribute to the Re Ukraine Relief Fund Bishop Brennan was talking about, thanks to the Diocese of Brooklyn's Compostela Fund. 100% of the money collected will provide direct at assistance to those affected by the war. Just make a check payable to the Compostela Fund of the RC Diocese of Brooklyn with the notation Ukraine and mail it to Diocesan Finance Office, 310 Prospect Park West, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. You can also give online at Catholic Foundation BQ.org slash Ukraine. The night before Easter, Bishop Brennan welcomed new Catholics through the Easter vigil. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bishop Brennan baptized five people and confirmed six others at the Co-Cathedral of St. Joseph. They are but a few of the more than 360 Catholics who were baptized in the Diocese of Brooklyn. After receiving the sacraments, Bishop Brennan walked through the Co-Cathedral, sprinkling water from the baptismal font onto the congregation. Hours earlier, the bishop was with the Polish community of Holy Cross Church in Maspeth to bless their Easter food baskets. The bilingual prayer service was attended by more than 300 people, including Auxiliary Bishop Witold Morjewski, who serves as the church's pastor. Two children from the parish also presented Bishop Brennan with a food basket in appreciation of his visit. You can read about all of the Holy Week and Easter Triduum events that happened in the Diocese of Brooklyn on the Tablet's website. Just go to thetablet.org to see all of those articles. Now for Catholics around the world, our celebration of the resurrection of Christ moves from Easter to Easter Tide. But what exactly does that mean? Jessica Easthope spoke with clergy and parishioners in Bensonhurst about the season and how it's marked. This rising from the dead it's common knowledge that Easter marks the end of Lent, but it also marks a beginning, another part of the Easter season that goes on for almost two months. And it's continued for the 50 days until the Feast of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. It's a very special time. It's called Eastertide, the time between Easter and Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus' disciples on the seventh Sunday after Church Easter. For the 50 days, this is a constant reminder that Jesus is the light of the world. Monsignor Jesus David Casado says the Polish, Irish, and Italians have their own ways of celebrating Easter Monday and observing this time. Most people in Italy take the day off and they go to the country and celebrate all the leftovers, all the leftover food. You do divine mercy. Nila Ruggieri and Vittoria Spagnolo say Eastertide is a time to live the joy of Easter and the hope of the resurrection. The Holy Spirit comes and enables us with his power, with his strength and with his joy. And that was the way to go to the disciples and show He's there with us. I say the rosaries every day, at least 15 a day. On any given day, you can find Carlo Formasano at St. Athanasius, alone, praying the rosary. For him, Eastertide is a time to give, using the power of the Holy Spirit to help others. You get that spirit, the Holy Spirit that comes into you, like he gave it to the disciples. If you could feel that just for one day, it's the best feeling in the world. Monsignor Casado says it's also the best time of year for evangelization. Why is it the perfect time of the year to bring people into church and back to church? It's interesting because during this Eastertide, after this pandemic, it's time to reach out to people that have fallen away. It's an excellent opportunity to really put your hand out and bring people back. In Bensonhurst, Jessica Easthope, Currents News. Attention all artists from first grade to 12th. The tablet newspaper's Christ is Risen Easter Art Contest is back and this year it's gone digital. You won't have to drop off your masterpiece at the tablet office anymore. Just get to work creating something that shows that Christ is Risen. Take a picture and upload it to the tablet website. Then it's Judgment Day. The tablet staff will take a look at all of the entries and the winners will receive a cash prize. So how do you do it? Head over to thetablet.org for all the details. And there's an extra incentive. If you win, you just might see your artwork published in an upcoming edition of the newspaper. And if you're not an artist, the tablet has another initiative you could take part in. The great COVID relief fundraiser is on, so students, 
Ready, set, subscribe. The person who sells the most subscriptions to the tablet will get money back for not only themselves, but their, for their school as well. And that's not all. Every new reader you earn for the Brooklyn paper will get you that much closer to this year's grand prize of $3,000. But you better hurry up. Students have until April 29th to sell the subscriptions. And don't worry, you can still participate even if you don't know a kid taking part. Just go to the tablet.org slash COVID relief fundraiser. There you can select the parish school of your choice. You can also extend your subscription if you're already a big fan of the tablet. There's a lot more news headed your way. They say the subways are safe. New York City's mayor and police commissioner try to reassure the public less than a week after the Brooklyn shooting attack. Plus, the Easter holiday weekend turned out to be a violent one across the U.S. And... The war in Ukraine casting an ominous shadow over Orthodox Palm Sunday. There are now some big changes to the tablet website. You can get personalized access to the Catholic news you value. Sign up for free at thetablet.org. Several shootings across the U.S. this past weekend marred the Easter holiday. Police in Pittsburgh are searching for several suspects after two teens were killed in a shooting Sunday morning. Police say the shooters opened fire at a large party. Eight other people were injured. Shimon Prokopes has the latest. Down. In Pittsburgh, a mass shooting at a large party held at a short-term rental property. Two 17-year-olds were killed and police say at least eight others were wounded by the gunfire early Sunday morning. It's heartbreaking. I mean, here we are Easter and we have multiple families, uh, two that won't see a loved one. Police say as many as 200 people were at the party, most of them underage. How can you even have a holiday uh, when your child uh, was involved in some, something traumatic like this? According to the police chief, multiple shooters firing more than 90 rounds inside and outside of the house. Some partygoers jumped out of windows, leaving some with broken bones and cuts, police say. The search for the suspects is underway, and officials are urging anyone with information to come forward as investigators process as many as eight separate crime scenes. In Columbia, South Carolina, one man was arrested after a mass shooting at a mall on Saturday. We didn't know who, who was shooting, what direction it was coming from, and uh, it was, I mean, it was really terrifying. 22-year-old Jawain Price appeared in court Sunday. According to the Columbia Police Department, Price is charged with unlawful carrying of a pistol. Police said more charges are possible. Police said they believe those involved in the shooting knew one another. The shooting left 14 people injured, at least nine suffered gunshot wounds, and five others hurt while attempting to leave the scene. About 100 miles south of Columbia in Hampton County, South Carolina, police say nine people were shot early Sunday morning at a lounge. Some people jumped into nearby ditches to avoid being hit, WTOC reported. The South Carolina Law Enforcement Division is leading the investigation. In Boston, police said two people were shot in the city's Chinatown neighborhood. Both of these males were transported to local area hospitals and both are currently listed in current, uh, critical condition with life-threatening injuries. Three suspects are in custody after the vehicle police said they were fleeing in crashed. Two were injured in the crash, but police said they do not believe those injuries are life-threatening. Boston police say what led up to the shooting is still unclear, but the investigation is ongoing. That was Shimon Prokopez reporting. Police say the victims in the Boston shootings are in their 30s. New York City's mayor and the NYPD commissioner are insisting that the subway system is safe despite last week's shooting rampage at a Brooklyn subway station. The statements from Eric Adams and Keyshawn Sewell come as crime has soared in the transit system. Ten people were shot in last week's shooting. Frank James is facing a terrorism charge in connection with the attack. The distant thunder of shelling momentarily replaced by the songs and prayers of Ukraine's faithful. In years past, it would have been a joyous celebration, but with many caught in the middle of Russia's war, this year's Orthodox Palm Sunday 
was more about being comforted that rather than commemoration. As Clarissa Ward reports, the brief moment of respite comes as some are still trying to evacuate from the front lines. At the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral in Slovyansk, an ardent prayer from worshipers under the shadow of Russia's war. We ask for your mercy, Lord. Please hear us. They have gathered here for Orthodox Palm Sunday, carrying willows instead of palms per the Orthodox tradition. It's supposed to be a celebration of Jesus' return to Jerusalem, but there is little joy in this congregation. Ukrainian officials say this city will be a decisive battleground in Russia's imminent offensive in the Donbass region. The streets are getting emptier as the fighting gets closer. Those still here are being urged to leave. This group is awaiting an evacuation bus to the safety of western Ukraine. Raisa tells us she's taking her grandchildren to Lviv. Their mother died three years ago. You hear what's happening here, she says. My husband's still at home. His health isn't good enough to make the journey. Her granddaughter offers some support. Oh, Grandma, she says, I love you. Anna Stepanovna is full of anguish that the international community has failed to rein in Putin. When they show the children killed, I can't, I cry, she says. Why can't they stop this one idiot? If they will send me, I will shoot him. Seven weeks into this ugly war, there is no end in sight. Pavel is saying goodbye to his wife, Olga. She doesn't want to let go of him. Scenes of separation that have become all too familiar. Everything will be okay, the organizer tells her. Comforting words that mask a grim reality. That was Clarissa Ward reporting ahead of the Orthodox Palm Sunday celebration. The Vatican's papal almoner visited Ukraine for Holy Week. Cardinal Konrad Krzyzewski went on behalf of the Holy Father, spending the triduum with the people of Ukraine and delivering a Vatican registered ambulance to a hospital in Kyiv. He also visited Borodyanka, a town that had been under control of Russian forces, and prayed in front of a mass unmarked grave that was located along the roadside. Now back to our top story, the Pope's plea for peace during Easter service. John Allen talks more about what the Holy Father had to say. Uh, the pontiff acknowledged that Ukraine has been dragged into this war, but did not mention Russia by name. That in keeping with his policy from the beginning of trying to keep some channel of communication with the Russians open. Uh, in addition, the Pope named a number of other hotspots, including the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which has flared up anew in recent days, Syria, Yemen, Myanmar, situations in Africa and Latin America. But it was clear that Ukraine had a special pride of place. That was the editor of Crux, John Allen. This was the first time the pontiff has been able to celebrate Easter in front of a large crowd in St. Peter's Square since the pandemic began. And still to come on Currents News, they laced up and couldn't wait to get going. The Boston Marathon gets underway amid some tight security. And the pastors who were busy filling up gas tanks instead of Easter baskets this holiday weekend. Do you have a story idea or want to share a tip? Email us at newstips at desalesmedia.org or call our 24-hour number, 718-517-3122. We'll be right back. Runners took to the streets of Boston Monday morning, marking the return of the prestigious marathon to its springtime spot for the first time since 2019. <laughs> 
and they're off. Roughly 30,000 people representing all 50 states and 100 countries tackled the 26.2 mile run. It's a triumphant return after the pandemic forced officials to cancel the 2020 marathon and postpone last year's race until October. Some parents in Michigan are upset because a kindergartner shared a bottle of tequila during snack time. School officials say the child shared a bottle of Jose Cuervo with her classmates before a teacher stopped it. Megan Woods has the story. There was so many thoughts running through my mind like, oh my God, what if, you know, what if it was open before the girl broke at the school? How much was it? Like Alexis Smith says Thursday morning she got a call from her daughter's school, Grand River Academy. They told her a kindergartner brought a pre-mixed bottle of Jose Cuervo to class and shared it with four classmates. One of them was Smith's five-year-old. I asked her, like, is my daughter okay? Um, and she said, She's right here and she looks okay. And then I said, okay, well, how much does she drink? The school couldn't get her a definite answer. My daughter take medicine and first off, no kids should be drinking. And you know that, you know, just the shot itself, it, it burned. Like, how do you feel like anything could have happened? She picked her daughter up from school early. And later that day, the principal sent out this letter addressed to kindergarten parents saying in part, quote, disciplinary measures will be taken in accordance with the student code of conduct. And while school was closed Friday, Smith says her daughter will not be back on Monday. It's so heartbreaking. I feel like her first year of kindergarten was already cut short because of COVID and situations like this just make it worse. That was Megan Woods reporting. School officials say they have addressed the situation but can't share the details because of student privacy laws. Some pastors in Detroit spent their Easter weekend easing their congregation's pain at the pump. The religious leaders were filling gas tanks instead of Easter baskets. They provided $6,000 worth of gas in 10 gallon increments to drivers in need. In addition to filling up their cars, the pastors also offered prayers for safe travel. Members of the United Dance Team for St. John's Prep acting like Easter bunnies for children in need. The team's annual Easter basket project put together 510 baskets that were custom made and tailored to a child's age and gender. On the morning of Good Friday, they were delivered by faculty and alumni to three family shelters in Queens. The baskets were made possible through generous donations from the St. John's Prep extended family, including many alumni. That's awesome. And that is Currents News. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Before we go, we want to take one more look at the Holy Week and Easter services that took place in the Diocese of Brooklyn. Hope to see you again next time. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Hallelujah.